Hello there astronomers, Jimmy Newland here. I wanted to follow up on the video I made about using Aladdin to make three color images with astronomical data uh, with another example. Uh, one that is also free and open source and this one is not just for astronomy. I'm going to use the GIMP program, GNU image manipulation program, to produce three color images and GIMP, which is very much like Photoshop, can open up FITS files natively, which I don't think Photoshop can do. And um, instead of having to use a third party piece of software or something from one of the astronomical uh, observatories or NASA or ESO or something like that, I can uh, just open them directly with, with GIMP. And I'm going to attempt to replicate more or less what I did with the Aladdin uh, software package from CVS. And I want to say something about representative color. If you're making astronomical images, it's a creative process. It is not going to be straightforward in the sense of this is exactly what you would see through the telescope. That's just not how they work. So there's always an element of creativity. And uh, you can see here I, I played with the settings in Aladdin to make this globular cluster, which has a lot more stuff going on in it than what you can see here. But uh, you can see the different colors and they've worked out pretty well. I didn't try super hard with Aladdin. I just sort of played with the settings. If uh, We're going to try to do something similar here. So let's close that and open GIMP. So this is free. It's open source. It can run on any platform. You want to make sure you have the latest version. And the version I'm using, which I think is 2.8, can open up FITS files natively, which means if I say file and open as layers, and navigate to where my files are located. I'll just show you they're on my desktop. And I've given them good file names. I've renamed them from what I uh, downloaded them as, which was from the Las Cumbres Observatory. I also use the Skynet Robotic Telescope Network, and they also have weird file names. So I've renamed it the name of the object and then the colors, so I can't possibly mess it up. And then I'm going to select all three, and I'm going to hit open. And you'll notice it brings up a dialog box that says load FITS files. And if you are familiar with FITS files, this is where the scaling would come into play. If you use something like a FITS Liberator or DS9, you play with the scaling until you start to see some detail. I'm actually going to leave it exactly as it is and just hit open. And it should do it for all three of them. And I'm going to just hit open. I'm going to leave the settings exactly as is. And you can see that even though the stars are there, they're not super visible in my file. So the very first thing I need to do is go to image and mode and RGB. The uh, FITS files are much more complicated files than what I'm going to end up making. I'm going to end up making a PNG file and I'm going to lose a lot of data, but I'm trying to make a pretty space picture. I'm not necessarily trying to uh, do any science. So now that I've got this thing in the right mode, I'm going to go to each of these one at a time, each layer that I opened up, red, green, and blue, and notice how the file names make it easy for me to figure out which one I'm working with. And I'm going to, uh, under the uh, layers menu, there's a mode, and you need to select screen or lighten or dodge. I'm going to use screen because that's the one I've used before in order to blend all of the three layers together. So they'll all be uh, sitting one on top of the other. So I'm going to do, I did that with red. Now I'm going to do it with green. And the one that's on bottom, uh, you can leave as is, but just for completeness sake, I'm going to make them all screen. And then now that I've done that, I've got a, uh, I mean, you can see there are stars there. It's not a pretty space picture yet. It is a space picture, but I'm not quite where I need to be. So I'm going to go to uh, colors and levels. No, let's not do that first. First, let's actually add the color information so we can see what's what. So I've selected red, then I'm going to go to colors. I'm going to choose colorize. You can't do this until after you have made the image mode RGB, by the way. And then for this one is selected red, so I make sure it's red. I know that the hue should be zero. And I'm going to make the saturation 100 and the lightness negative 50 because for space images, those are good starting points. Well, the hue has to be zero if this is the red file. So I'm going to hit OK, and notice that there's a red tinge. So I'm going to click Green, and I'm going to go to Colors and Colorize. And then for Hue, I'm going to pick 120. Zero for red, 120 for green, and 240 for blue. And saturation should be 100, and lightness should be negative 50 again. We're going to play with the saturation and lightness 
once we get these going, but let's add the color information first, and then blue, colors, colorize, and then this one should be 240 and 100 for saturation and negative 50 for lightness. I am going to own up to the fact that I am not an expert image manipulation expert. Uh, yes, I said expert twice. That's how serious I am about not being an expert. Uh, so I've, I've learned these settings from uh, online tutorials and from astronomers. And uh, I'm just going to uh, go with what I know. And if I make an awesome picture, I can share it with my social media audience and then I get all the likes, which is why we do this. I'm just kidding, I'm trying to make a pretty space picture. So I colorized all three, so I'm gonna go back to the red and I'm gonna click on colors and I'm gonna to go to levels this time. And um, let's just try doing auto on all three. So there's red auto, uh, colors, I clicked on green and I'm gonna to go to colors and levels and green auto. And you can see that every time I do that, it's adding, it's, it's fiddling around with the uh, particular uh, brightness and contrast of uh, each individual one. I haven't done blue yet, so blue, colors, levels, and uh, let's try auto. But I noticed earlier when I was playing with this that blue was more blue than I really wanted. And by wanted, I mean, again, this is creative process. I'm trying to just make it pretty. Uh, and I'm gonna individually move these little sliders around and see what I can get. And uh, let's try this. Sure. And I'm going to hit OK. Um, and honestly, that's what I wanted. I got a pretty, a pretty space picture. And it doesn't look that different than the one I got with Aladdin. Uh, you can see they're pretty close. I do want to show a couple of things, though, about one of the things GIMP can do that I could not figure out how to do with Aladdin. Very often, when you take three images, the um, exposures were done in very slightly different places. And I'm gonna zoom in and show you what I mean here once I find the zoom tool, there it is. I'm gonna zoom in until I'm looking at a particular star. And you can see that there's a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of red, and they're not lined up. So I'm gonna go back to the red one. I'm gonna turn off the other two for a minute, and I wanna show you, actually if I select them one at a time, you can see that they're not lined up. So I'm going to click the uh, Move tool and Red, and I'm going to click back in here, and I'm going to use the keyboard to move it around until I get them more or less lined up. Here, let's turn off the green, and let's just line up. Let's just line up red and blue, and that's probably as good as I can do. And then I'm going to turn off red and turn blue back on and click back in here and see if I can move them around at all. Green, click drag um, and that looks like as good as it's gonna get and it wasn't too bad Wow you'll notice by the way that each of the individual files here now that I've now that I have them all on there let's see if I can make them work together and you'll never get it perfectly anyway you'll notice that some of the, the pixels in uh, with different filters are more full than in other places and you may not ever get this perfect it may not ever be what you want um, but at least it's, it's better than it was. Um, and you can always play with that some more if you want. I'm gonna zoom back out. I never did any of this with Aladdin, by the way, because I never figured out how, but it is helpful to be able to align them. And when you're looking at a galaxy or especially something where uh, you need more um, detail on a particular feature, being able to line up the individual layers like that makes a big difference. I'm not sure it made a huge difference here uh, but still, let's see. Let's do a little compare and contrast. And they're not exactly the same by any means. This one still looks bluer than that one, but I got it what I wanted. And if you wanted to, in each of these individual layers, there's a lot more you can do, by the way. Here, let's close this picture. If you pick on, uh, click on one of the individual layers, there's a lot of things you can play with. You can play with the light, the brightness and contrast, the levels, uh, which we were just fiddling with. You can do, curves is another good example of a kind of thing you can uh, change a lot of things all at once. And instead of doing the individual value, you can do it for each channel one at a time. And I'm actually gonna cancel that. 
uh, because I, my pretty space picture is what I want it to be. Um, and if there were like uh, hot pixels in here, which means that in one filter they're on, but in others they're not, or maybe some other kind of mess in here, you could spend a little bit more time cleaning them up. But I, I've gotten what I wanted so far. So I'm gonna go file and I'm going to choose, oh, let's do save as. There are a couple of different ways to do this, but I'm gonna do save as and um, we're gonna do this by file type. And let's do, actually, I don't wanna do any of those. That's not really true. File and let's do export as. Be a little bit more careful about what I'm doing. And then instead of fits, here, let's delete all of this. Let's go to the desktop and I'm gonna call this NGC instead of blue and fits, I'm gonna call it um, uh, GIMP. So I remember that I was playing with that and I'm gonna put .png and I'm gonna hit export. Give it a minute and it brings up the uh, various things about PNG. If I wanna change any of those, I'm actually gonna leave them just as they are. I can fiddle with them a little bit if I wanted and uh, let's hide this so I can go see they both worked. And uh, if I choose to open them both with preview, I can do a little compare and contrast. Um, they're different, and I didn't try very hard to make them alike. Uh, I just played around with the different settings, and I could make five different versions of this, and uh, each one could highlight a different aspect of the particular globular cluster if I wanted to. So you need to go and get yourself GIMP it is great for manipulating FITS files from astronomical data. And once you make some really cool pictures, I hope that you will share them with me. Thanks for watching.